All right, so I'm going to talk to you today about maybe one of the most important messages that I have ever taught in this church and to the world. It's how to hear God's voice. How many of you say, I would love to hear God's voice in my life? That's two of y'all. I see you, LaDon, back there. Um, so, so four steps, and, and also I'm going to use myself as an example today of how I actually hear God's voice. And so, are you excited about God's voice in your life? All right, so... First Chronicles 28, we'll start right there. And, and, and Solomon, my son, this is David, uh, King David that wrote this. He says, and Solomon, my son, he says, I want you to know the God of your father. I want you to serve him with a what kind of heart? A perfect heart, a pure heart. And with a willing mind. How many of you know that your heart's got to be right and your mind's got to be right? We used to say, get your mind right. So you got a pure heart and you have a willing mind. And here's what he says. Because the Lord searches all hearts. God is constantly searching every heart on planet earth. Every human being, 8 billion right now on planet earth, and God is searching 8 billion hearts. And he's looking for a pure heart. That's how the, the pure gold will show up in your life when you got a, a pure heart. And understands all the imaginations of your thoughts. And if you will seek him, God, he will be found of you. I'm taking these and thou's and thy's out. But if you forsake him, the Lord, he will cast you off forever. Verse 10. Now take heed now, Solomon. This is your dad speaking to you. For the Lord has chosen you to build him a house a sanctuary and you're going to have to be strong and you're going to have to make your mind up to do it because you're a free mortal agent. So here's what the Lord is saying. He's saying that he searches the hearts of every person on planet earth. He's looking for a, a pure heart and he's looking for a willing mind. I wonder if you have a willing mind to serve the Lord today. All right, now four, there's four steps to hearing God's voice. When we're created, God created us with two ears and one mouth. God created us to be able to communicate. By the way, you have two ears. Did I, did I fail to mention that? And only one mouth. Come on, double for your trouble. Probably need to listen more. Come on, Jennifer. That's exactly right. <laughs> um, so, so God created us with a mouth and with some ears. And the reason why he did is because we were created to commune. We're created to talk, to communicate. He wants us to listen and he wants us to talk, communicate. And so God is a spirit and man, man or woman, is a spirit being. So God wants us to communicate and connect with his spirit, our spirit connected to his spirit, as well as he wants us to communicate and connect one to another. That's why he created us with ears and a mouth. Praise the Lord. So it's not a foreign thought to think that God wants to talk to you. God has a voice that he wants you to hear so that you can understand what 
you're doing in life because we don't know what we're doing until God tells us what the purpose is, what his plan is, what the vision is for our life. We don't know what to do with ourselves. I don't know about y'all, but before God came in my life, I was taking out the mailboxes in the ditches. I couldn't drive. I was not a good driver, Nate. <laughs> I was in the ditches all the time. And I couldn't hardly see that good. I could see with one eye like this. So... So the first thing then concerning hearing God's voice is number one. And the first thing is, is we have to value God's voice in our life. We've got to want to hear God's voice. Here's the first thing that has to happen. You have to set an appointment with God. Somebody said every morning. Who said that? Come on, Jeremy, that's fantastic. You got to set an appointment. Listen, we set appointments with people we don't like. <laughs> you know, we got to set an appointment with the Lord. And, and so my time with God my set appointment every week. Now, there are times that emergencies come up and I got to have an emergency appointment with the Lord. I know y'all have never had anything come up in your life, right? Not today. It's still, you're about to get out of bed, Eileen. So far, everything's going great today. Lord, I've cussed nobody out. My attitude has been perfect. But in a minute, I'm fixing to get out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't you didn't slap anybody but i'm just about to get up lord <laughs> that's what they said on this side over here in in this section her name is joyce <laughs> Rejoice. All right. Praise the Lord. All right. So, by the way, a, a, a missed appointment is a disappointment. A missed appointment is a disappointment in our life. So, my time that I have set for God is on Saturday. Um, and, and usually I get here to the church between 7 and 8 o'clock on Saturday. Is that right, Toomey? Um, Toomey brings me a steak every Saturday, literally cooks a steak every Saturday, and he hand delivers it to me here at the church. Where you... <laughs> He's just got to set an appointment with God. And, 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 and the stakes come out of the throng room. <laughs> they just show up. And, um, and I take that time and I spend it with God in his word. I pray to God about what should we talk about for Sunday. And, and I get a burden in my heart. Because I don't feel like I can talk to you with real conviction in my heart unless it's a real, something really serious in my heart that I feel like God wants all of us to, to hear. And by the way, I, I, I grow from the same messages you grow from. So I'm growing every day. So as I'm in the presence of God, I'm getting fed just like you're getting fed. And then we take the message and then we go to Pakistan with it. We go to Africa with it. And millions of people hear these messages that we have. And they're fed the same thing that we are fed. So here's my burden today. My burden is, is for every person that hears this message to really learn a simple way of how to really hear God's voice in their life. So, so... I don't want just a message. I want you to understand how to do it and then actually do it in your life and start hearing God's voice. So imagine if, 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 if the world, many people in the world, millions of people in the world start hearing God's voice, really. Yeah. 
Imagine what that means. Now I'm starting to get excited. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you even some personal words that I have from God that I've written down. I'm literally going to tell you exactly what God told me. And I wrote it down for my life, for my wife, for my children, for you, this church, Miracle Place Church, because I put those things those questions before God and I ask him what about Miracle Place Church what about the members what about my wife Jeannie what about my children and I just ask God and then when I ask God God starts speaking and I start writing that's how that works so you got to actually set an appointment with God Let's look at Exodus chapter 19, 10, and 11 real quick. And the Lord said unto Moses, go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes. And be ready against the third day for on the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Verse 19, and when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and it waxed louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered him by, by a voice. How many of you know God wants to speak to you? God has a voice and he wants us to hear his voice. So I have to set an appointment with God. That's what they did is they set an appointment with God and God says in three days I'm going to show up and speak to you. Be ready. Consecrate yourself. Prepare yourself. What if Miracle Place Church went to have a church service and there was no ushers here? And I just got up and said, well, I, I, I'm just now getting here today. I'm just going to wing the sermon today. I didn't spend any time with God on Saturday. I had to go golfing on Saturday and I didn't have time to prepare a message for you. So I'm just going to get up and see whatever comes up out of me. No ushers, n nobody in the parking lot, nobody in the coffee shop, no, nobody prepared to have church. What would church be like? What I'm trying to say is we got to prepare ourselves to hear the voice of God. We got we to gotta be prepared. This is serious business. This is an appointment with God. I need to have a time. I need to have a place so that so that I'm prepared. So there's no doubt in anybody's mind that on Saturday, many people ask me to come do this and come do that. And I say, no, I have an appointment on Saturday. My appointment is with God. And by the way, if I don't hear from God, what in the world? I've already got a, a theme that I'm probably running on, but I, I haven't really finalized my points so how in the world am I going to be able to talk to you and give you something that's going to feed you from heaven and I hadn't been in heaven? I haven't been with God. So, so it's vital that you be prepared to be able to meet with God. So you've set an appointment, you've set a time, you've set a place, and, and then you meet with God, and that's how I do it. I meet with God every uh, Saturday. Let me ask you something. You do what you value in your life. Ladies, let me ask you something. Do you value Mauve, Louisiana? What? What? <laughs> Because when I go to the mall with Jeannie, you want me to let, let her tell you what happens, what kind of experience that is? Because after 20 minutes in Mob, Louisiana, I've... What time is it? <laughs> and finally she says, you just stay home. I, I'm going to go shopping without you because you're no fun to go shopping with this because I don't value that that's not I don't want to shop I want to bag it 
I want to go into the store, grab it, put it in the basket, and I conquered it, and it's over. I'm ready. Next. <laughs> Unless we go somewhere that I value, like Bass Pro Shop. Now, if you go to Bass Pro Shop, I, I have all the time in the world. Two hours is no problem in Bass Pro Shop. What I'm saying is, is you got to value the voice of God. Come on now. Just like you go to Mob, Louisiana, you got to value. So the first thing is, is to get your mind right, you got to value God's voice. That's your attitude. You got to have the right attitude. The second thing is, is you got to be still. You got to wait and you got to worship God. And I love some scriptures. Let's look at them real quick. Um, Psalms 46, 10. Be still and know that I am who? God. God, and I will be exalted among the heathen, and I will be exalted in the earth. How many exalt the Lord right now? So you got to be still in the presence of God. Um, you got to acknowledge God's sovereignty in, in your life. How many of you know that God's large and in charge? He's king. Yes, sir. And then I acknowledge my dependence upon him. So I'm saying, God, you are the master and sustainer of the universe. You rule over the universe. And I'm dependent upon you. And so I'm coming into your presence. Listen, one time my wife called me. She called me and I said, hello. hello? And then I said, uh, who is this? She said, Jeannie. I said, Jeannie who? <laughs> no, nah, I'm just teasing you. That didn't happen. <laughs> but in order for her to get something from me, she's got to be in my presence. Oh, shout somebody, shout something. I shed something right there. If you're going to get something from God, if you're going to hear God's voice, you can't say, who is this? What's your name? I don't even know you, God. You got to get into his presence. If you want to hear God's voice, you got to be still. You got to worship. You, you got to wait on God. You remember what I said? Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount upon wings of an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Listen, that word wait actually means a longing. It's an expectation. It, it's a faith. It's a belief in, in that God is going to come through. That God is going to supernaturally uh, redeem you. Some kind of way you're going to be mounted upon wings of an eagle. You're going to use the storms of life to calipot you over and above. Some kind of way what's bad is going to turn to good. Shout somebody. Wings of an eagle. A longing, an expectation, a hope in God. God, I believe you. I can't wait to be in your presence, Lord, and in your power, oh great God. For you are God, and there is none beside you. You are sovereign, Lord. You will be exalted among the heathen. You'll be exalted in the earth. God, I exalt you and glorify you and magnify you and exalt you. I bless your holy name, oh great God. I call upon you, for there is none beside you. I trust you, and I I love you, I worship you, and I bless you, oh great God. You better not answer the phone and say, who is this? Yeah, funny phone story. One time he was in service and, and uh, was showing some feature on his phone and said, Right here. <laughs> right here. He says, Y'all watch this. And he said, Call Jeannie. And it said, Which one? I said, Holmes, how many genies you got up in that phone? <laughs> 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 and 
And I've never got the phone out again after that experience. <laughs> yeah. So here's the second point. All right. The first point is, is we've got to value whose voice. We've got to value God's voice. We got to want to hear God's voice. The second thing is, is I've got to get still. I've got to be in a quiet place where I tune out all the noise of the world. You got to get out of the craziness of the world. You can't hear God's small, still voice until you get to a place where it's you and God. You got to enter into his presence. Listen, every time I get something from Jeannie, because I got in her presence. Shout somebody. I can't get nothing from that good looking girl unless I enter into her presence. And that's the same principle with God. You got to tune the world out, get out of the presence of the world and you got to get in the presence of God and, and you shut the world up. You shut the world out. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 17, you got to worship God. Let's look at it. Second Chronicles. It says, and you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and you will see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not. Don't be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Listen, would it be all right with you if the Lord fought your battles for you? That you didn't even have... That's what happens when you come into the presence of God and you're still in God's presence because you've entered his presence and now you're worshiping God and you're praising God. The Bible says the Lord, listen, when you start praising God, God starts fighting for you. God starts waging war for you. One of the revelations of God is, is that when I praise him, he takes care of my enemies. When I glorify him and worship him, God fights for me. That's what the scripture says. You shall not need to fight this battle. Go ahead and set yourselves and stand still. And when you stand still in the presence of God, he, you shall see his salvation. Remember what I said. Salvation is not just eternal life. Salvation is saving you from your enemies. You get saved every day. Every day, all day. Shout somebody. When Jesus becomes Savior, he is Savior against your enemies. All you have to do is, is connect with him. That's why you got two ears and one mouth. Because you were created to communicate and God wants to communicate with you. He wants to connect with you. And when you connect with him, all of heaven comes into your life. All authority in heaven and earth becomes yours. That's why he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done done on earth as it is in heaven. I love Moses at the Red Sea, Exodus chapter 14. And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still. Again, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The great world power, Egypt. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Second principle. Of hearing God's voice. Be still. And I didn't want to give you all these. It might be too much. Because I put weight in there. And I kind of wondered if that's too much. Because if you give people too much, it's too much. They can't, they can't get it. Be still. Wait. And worship. So here's the first point. First point is, is I value what? God's voice. 
Lord, I want your voice in my life. I value it so much that I'm going to set a time every day. I'm going to set a time at least once a week to spend some quality time just with you because I value your voice. I'm setting an appointment with you. I'm a, I'm a specific time and place that I'm going to be with you. The next thing is, is when I've set that time, I start to be still in the presence of God. I start to wait on God and then I start to worship. I put on some worship music because when I start worshiping, it releases heaven's armies in my life. The next thing is, is, is that I gotta, I gotta pray and read the Bible. That's the next point. So we start praying and we start reading the Bible, Mark chapter one, verse 35. And in the morning, Jesus rising up a great while before day, he went out and he departed into a solitary place. And there he did what? He prayed. So when did Jesus schedule a time with the father? In the morning time. That's exactly right. Um, how many of you know if Jesus did that, we, we probably need to do it too. This is what I, I put down. I just gave an example. Um, you read Ephesians chapter 5. And it says that Jesus Christ loved the church so much that he laid his life down for it. Well, when I read that in the presence of God, what is God saying to me? And then Jesus said that, that the church is like his wife, the same as my wife, I'm her husband. So my role as a husband is like Jesus with the church laying my life down for my wife. And so God is telling me that I need to lay my life down for my wife just like Jesus Christ laid his life down for the church. And he cleansed it and he washed it and he sanctified it. And so now I hear God's voice from his word that is telling me what I need to do in my marriage. And by the way, when you start serving your wife like Christ served the church, you'll start getting happy she'll start getting nice she'll start getting nicer hallelujah so that's that's how you hear God's voice when you read his word God starts to speak to your heart so prayer then is a transference of a burden so what happens is, is when you start praying to God and you have a burden on your heart, you pray until that burden lifts. Now listen, if you leave prayer with God and you still have a burden, you didn't pray, you griped. You complained. Because prayer means a transference. He transfers your burden to him cast all your care upon him because he cares for you shout somebody now look i told y'all about the angel last week and so um what time is it yeah i still have a little time let me tell you a little bit of that because this was a revelation that i got in revelations chapter 8 verse 3 and 5 it talks about our prayers going up to heaven. And here's what the scripture says. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer your prayers that y'all been praying uh, of the saints upon the golden altar, which is before the throng of God. Now shout somebody, your prayers are going to heaven. And they're being offered before the presence of God himself. At the golden altar. By the way, God's altar is gold. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, there's your prayers again, ascended up before God out of the angel's hands. And the angel took the censer and he filled it with the fire of the altar. Come on now, say fire. And then he cast it into the earth and there was voices and thunderings and lightnings and earthquake. 
Something supernatural happened. God answered your prayer and he sent it back. Now here's what the scripture is saying. I never saw this till last week. When we pray, our prayers go up to the third heaven where God is. God the Father. An angel, his only job is to take your prayers, mix them with incense, and the fire of God from God's altar, and then throw them back down. And when he throws them down, thunder starts happening, voices start manifesting, earthquake starts quaking and shaking, something supernatural happens. I never saw that before. Amazing that that angel with the sensor in his hand was actually saying that when your prayers fill the bowl of the angel in heaven, God, and, and when it gets full, then when it's full, God, the angel will pour it back down with the fire of God answered. And my question was, was when you pray, have you quit praying before your bowl has been filled? How wide is your river in your life? Because God says that when we pray, by the way, I thought, I said, oh my God, if my prayers are going to heaven, of course they are. Then what if I prayed in doubt? If I doubted, if I feared, if I didn't believe, could have the prince of the power of the air could have picked that prayer up off before it even got to the angel? And if I got to fill a bowl up before, before it gets poured back down, I got to pray more than one time. I can't get discouraged. I can't quit praying. I got to keep fighting the good fight of faith. I got to keep standing on planet Earth because I know that I know that God's going to answer my prayers. Listen, how big a bowl do you have for your wife? How big a bowl do you have for your children? How big a bowl do you have for your future, your health, all oh, these are bowls. The power is in you. According to the power that works in you, God's done all that he's going to do. Now it's up to you. You got to release the authority of God. So here's the third point. You got to pray. And you got to read your Bible. You value God's voice. You be still and you wait and you worship God. You pray and you read your Bible. And the last point to hear God's voice till it manifests here is you got to listen and you got to write. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Write it, write it, make it plain upon tablets that he may run that reads it. And here's the last thing I do in the presence of God, listening for his voice. I've worshiped him. I've sought him. Now I just sit down with a piece of paper and an ink pen and I ask God questions. This is one that, that I asked God back January 3rd of 2020. I said, God, what is your plan for me in MPC? And this is what the Lord said. I have called you and anointed you for an extraordinary things for me. Keep doing just what you're doing. Pastoring, loving, serving at MPC. I'm opening worldwide doors for you. But your time is not yet. My calling is with you. My favor and blessing is upon you. I'm setting you and Zach up for my perfect will. And millions will be influenced, saved, freed, healed, and delivered. Fast and seek me and I will give you breakthrough and clear out some hindrances. Keep the joy and be faithful. All right. This was January 3rd of 2020. August of 2020, 
Africa opened up for us. Millions of people are hearing the gospel of Jesus right now. That was the doors that he said that he was opening for us. Amazingly, even before my son Zach got saved, I got words from God. I asked God, what about my son Zach? He said, your son Zach is going to be saved. He's going to be right beside you. My son Zach came his last year in college. He came in my bedroom. He says, dad, the world has let me down. Oh, some woman let me down. I didn't run, wasn't everything I was going to be. I thought in football. He says, man, I need the Lord. Would you lead me to the Lord? I led Zach Sinclair to the Lord and he's in in church with us to this day but God had given me that word before because how do you know what to do with yourself if God doesn't speak in your life I read another I have marked my front liners and have begun to strategically position them for a major harvest of souls for what I'm about to give them is so precious to me that I had to test them first I am separating sheep from goats. I am beginning to train my frontliners for the year 2020. I'm giving them 2020 vision for their assignment. Death of perception skills um, to discern the enemy and the ability to take him out with precision and sensitivity to my now moments where I will download strategies for breakthrough that take the land that I have kept for them to conquer. What I hid from you were mysteries in my sovereignty as I was preparing you for intense and major acceleration in your lives. You will see this happen as you approach the year 2020. This started for them 10 years ago in 2010 and the fulfillment of your destiny. Before I formed you and, and sanctified you and ordained you to the nations, Jeremiah 1, 4 and 5. Things that were said about them by my mouth even before they were born will come to pass for my frontliners because of their radical faithfulness. Despite what they went through, they trusted me in their complete obedience. This is the key I was looking for in my frontliners. Radical trust that leads to radical obedience that leads them into their destiny. Wow. Explain some of the hell that I walked through. My heart had to be tested. I had to be tried. I had to be proven or I would not be proven faithful to be able to take his call to the nations. I had to go through hell and I had to stand and I had to fight because that's what made me who I am today. That's what gives me the authority to stand. I didn't understand it. What in the heck is the news? What is all the crazy people talking about? What the heck is going on, God? I had to try your heart before I could give you what I called you to. I said, thank you, God. You're so kind. <laughs> About killed me and Jeannie. God almighty. About killed us got a quick story come on come on sister Joyce <laughs> you, you gotta listen you gotta listen and you gotta write when you start writing it'll start being God's voice in your life the revelation of hearing God's voice is journaling I'm telling you now it ain't no automatic handwriting. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about allowing God to speak. And as you start writing, you'll start flowing. It'll just flow. It's just amazing. Because he said, write the vision, make it plain upon tablets so that he that runneth can actually run. That's the word of God. Habakkuk chapter two, verse two. That's how it works. Yeah, I heard a guy that uh, was in church and he asked his pastor how he got such great messages like, like I get. I'm just teasing. <laughs> and um, and um, 
And that's what he said. He says, look, he says, um, every morning I spend 30 minutes with God every day. And the guy said, man, there's no way. He says, you know, as busy as I am, there's no way that I could take that much time out to be with God. And the pastor said, well, you asked me how I hear God's voice and how I, I preach and, and what I do the beginning of my day. And he says, that's what I do. He said, why don't you try it? So the guy went home and actually set his alarm clock 30 minutes early before he got up to go to work and um, had a rocking chair on the back of the house and he would sit in that rocking chair and just rock and pray and seek God and read his Bible. And man, after a couple of weeks, he said, it's amazing, man. He says, my whole life is being transformed. It's being changed. And so about six months later, he met with the pastor again. He said, pastor, he says, he says, um, I've been praying. And he says, I think the Lord is telling me that I need to quit my advertisement job and come and take a position here at the church. And the pastor said, whoa, 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 wait, wait. Ain't nobody getting paid around here. This, we're just getting started. And um, he says, uh, he says, well, uh, he says, where do you pray? He says, well, I got this rocking chair. He said, look, man, he says, you need to go back to that rocking chair and make sure, he says, because I don't want to take on the responsibility for your family and y'all's welfare and you got to make sure it's God. So the guy said, sure, I'll do it. And he went back to his rocking chair and prayed another couple of weeks and he came back to the pastor and he says, yep, the Lord told me to quit my job and to join your staff. And he said, well, you know, no, we're not getting paid. Like I said, he says, he says, I know. He says, I have enough savings that I'm, I'm just going to come on. And so the guy came on, became one of the greatest staff members they had. This is Willow Creek um, with, um, um, what's his name? Bill Hybels. And um, helped him build the church. By the way, when we got there, they had a 7,200 seat auditorium when we visited there. Um, and it's in uh, Illinois. So, so ultimately stayed on the staff for years. And then it came time that he came back in and talked to the pastor. He said, pastor, he says, you know that rocking chair? The pastor said, yeah, I know that rocking chair. He says, I've, I've been in that rocking chair. And he says, I feel like God is uh, speaking to my heart to go help this man in Colorado that's starting a church. And I'm going to go there and take an advertisement job and be a support for that church to get started. And um, so he said, all right, says, that's what God's calling you. So he went up to Colorado and took a job and became a financial support to get that church up and going. And, and ultimately he came back to Illinois where they were from and uh, one day he was in his rocking chair reading a report from the doctor. The doctor said that he had terminal cancer, that cancer had spread all through his body and that he had like three months to live. So within three months, he actually died. And the pastor went over to the house after the funeral and he saw that rocking chair and he asked the family, he says, well, that rocking chair, because he wanted it. He says, what, what are y'all going to do with that rocking chair? And, and they said, oh no, that rocking chair. Um, she said, my husband spent years in that rocking chair with the Lord. And we're going to take that rocking chair and give it to our children. And then ultimately to our grandchildren, it's going to pass down to them. I want to pray for you today. My prayer is, is that you will all set an appointment with God, a time and a place that you will start to read your Bible and pray. And then you will start to get a piece of paper out 
and you will start writing the voice of God in your life. So right now, let's pray. Say, Lord, I ask you now to help me to hear your voice for my life, for my family's life. Lord, I'm asking you now to teach me to hear your voice in the name of Jesus. Now, real quick before we get ready to go today, is there anybody in here that says, hey, I've really never given my heart, my life to the Lord. And today I want to pray that salvation comes in my life. I've never dedicated my heart, my life. Christians are praying right now. I've never reconnected, rededicated my life to the Lord. If that's you, would you just raise your hand? I'm not going to ask you to come forward. I'm just going to pray for you. I see you back there. I see you, sir. I see you. I see you. I see you. I need to rededicate. I need to give my heart, my life to the Lord. I see you. I see you. Good, Troy. Thank you so much. Um, this section's missing. Anybody here in this section? <laughs> I'm cutting over you. Hey, how about over here? Don't leave this place until you until you've reconnected or you connect it with God. Let's pray right now out loud. Are y'all ready? Yes. Say, Lord, I ask you now for your presence and for your voice. I ask you to forgive me of every sin. I open my heart and my life for the spirit of God to come live in me, change me, save me, heal me, set me free right now in the name of Jesus. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, God's doing something great in your life. Somebody shout in this place for the voice of God. Hey, have a great, great, great day. We love all of you and we bless you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Have a great day.